What don't you recognize about recognition? I'm Allison Christians. And I'm Leandra Letterman, and it's time to break into tax. When you have a realization event, that's a trigger to evaluate tax consequences. But just because you realize doesn't mean you recognize. It could be that those tax consequences are going to happen sometime in the future. We call that deferral. We're going to focus on non-recognition in the U.S. federal income tax system. There are numerous non-recognition provisions in the Internal Revenue Code that basically say, despite the fact that there was a realization event, there's no gross income and no deduction at the time of that transaction. The U.S. federal income tax often provides for non-recognition in contexts where it doesn't want to let tax consequences interfere with a certain type of transaction. And sometimes the rationale is that it's a continuing investment in a similar property. Now, this gives us some unique problems to solve. For example, what are the mechanics of non-recognition? We're going to find out that in some non-recognition transactions, some things do have to be recognized, even though most don't. So we're going to explore that. And then we have to think about how are we keeping track of things. We're going to harken back to one of our previous videos, and we're going to touch on basis being a key to the non-recognition thing working. In the Internal Revenue Code, the section that deals with the realization of gain or loss is section 1001. And subsection C of section 1001 actually provides a presumption of recognition that except as provided elsewhere in the code, the gain or loss that's realized is recognized. But then there are numerous code provisions that do provide otherwise. And those are really the focus of this video, that type of section that's a non-recognition provision. Generally, in non-recognition transactions, any loss that's realized generally is not recognized, and any gain that's realized generally is not recognized either, except to the extent of non-qualifying property, known as boot, that the taxpayer receives. The second aspect of a non-recognition transaction is computing basis and the property the taxpayer receives. And in general, that basis will not be stepped up or down to fair market value. It will be a historic basis that reflects something like the basis in the property the taxpayer relinquished with some adjustments. And any boot that the taxpayer received in the transaction will typically take a fair market value basis. Taxpayers often really want to have a non-recognition transaction if the asset that they're disposing of has gain built into it. But often taxpayers want to avoid having a non-recognition transaction if what they're disposing of is an asset with a loss built into it, if they could recognize the loss on a sale or a taxable exchange. So give us a couple of examples of these kind of non-recognition provisions in the U.S. federal income tax. So some examples are like-kind exchanges of real property in Code Section 1031, transfers to controlled corporations in Section 351, and reorganizations, which are defined in Code Section 368. Okay, so let's dig a little bit into the details with an example. How would a non-recognition transaction work? So let's say the taxpayer owns Green Acre, which is a plot of unimproved land. And the taxpayer is a $20,000 basis in Green Acre. But Green Acre is now worth $100,000. If the taxpayer simply sold Green Acre for its fair market value of $100,000, the taxpayer would realize $80,000 of gain. And that $80,000 of gain would be recognized. There's no code section that excludes the gain on the sale of unimproved land. But what the taxpayer could do instead is exchange Green Acre for other real property that fits within the meaning of the Section 1031 rules on like-kind exchanges of real property. So say the taxpayer exchanges Green Acre for Blue Acre, which is also worth $100,000. Then the taxpayer has $80,000 of gain realized, just like on the straightforward sale. But this $80,000 would be protected from recognition by Code Section 1031. 
I'm assuming that the property otherwise qualifies under Section 1031, namely that the taxpayer is holding Green Acre for investment or using it in a business and will also use Blue Acre for one of those statutory purposes. So that's the first part. Non-recognition on the exchange of Green Acre for Blue Acre because Section 1031A would exclude the gain from gross income. Okay, and then the second part of the analysis is what basis does the taxpayer have in Blue Acre? The taxpayer computes the basis in Blue Acre by starting with the taxpayer's old basis in Green Acre, which was $20,000, and making some adjustments as provided under Code Section 1031D. And those adjustments include things like increasing the basis for any gain recognized, which there was none on this transaction, and decreasing the basis for any cash received, and there was none in this transaction either. So what happens is the taxpayer's basis in Blue Acre is the same $20,000 that the taxpayer had as a basis in Green Acre. And what that does is it provides for deferral because the taxpayer now owns Blue Acre, which is worth $100,000, And with a $20,000 basis in Blue Acre, that means there's $80,000 of paper gain on that property. There's $80,000 of gain built in so that if the taxpayer hypothetically turned around and immediately sold Blue Acre, that $80,000 that the taxpayer didn't recognize on the exchange of Green Acre would now be recognized on the sale of Blue Acre. So the example confirms that non-recognition is not exemption from income tax, but merely deferral of income tax. It's possible that the taxpayer will never sell Blue Acre. Deferral, if you hold on to it long enough, it turns into exemption. True enough. Okay, so what happens if you exchange Green Acre for Blue Acre, but Blue Acre is worth maybe just a little less than Green Acre, so the exchange partner throws in something else? Great question. A lot of times the values of property are not identical. So it's realistic that perhaps Blue Acre is worth only $90,000 while Green Acre is worth $100,000. And the parties won't do the deal unless it's even. So say that that counterparty provides $10,000 of cash along with Blue Acre in exchange for Green Acre. The taxpayer who owns Green Acre is still receiving $100,000 worth of value, $90,000 in the form of Blue Acre and $10,000 in the form of cash. And that taxpayer's basis in Green Acre is still the $20,000 that we had before. And so the owner of Green Acre is still realizing $80,000 of gain. And Section 1031 still applies. This is still a like-kind exchange of real property. It's just that the owner of Green Acre is not receiving solely real property. And so section 1031B applies where the exchange is not solely like kind. And what will happen there is section 1031B provides that the owner of Green Acre will only recognize any realized gain, the $80,000 here to the extent of the boot No, not that kind of boot, the non-qualifying property received, which here was cash boot, $10,000 worth. So the taxpayer who owns Green Acre will recognize $10,000 out of the $80,000 of realized gain. But now I have a basis problem. So the taxpayer will take as the basis in Blue Acre, the taxpayer's old basis in Green Acre, that $20,000 minus the cash boot received of $10,000 plus the gain recognized of $10,000. And it so happens in this example, those two numbers offset. They will not always offset. But here you have $20,000 minus 10,000 plus 10,000. And that gets the taxpayer a $20,000 basis in Blue Acre. And we can test and make sure that that provides appropriate deferral. The taxpayer had $80,000 of gain built into Green Acre and recognized $10,000 of it on the exchange for Blue Acre. So $70,000 of gain realized was protected by Section 1031. It was realized but not recognized. So if the principle of deferral is met here, 
the former owner of Green Acre should have a basis in Blue Acre that's $70,000 below its value. And with a $20,000 basis in Blue Acre, that is $70,000 below the $90,000 value at the time of the exchange. So if that taxpayer turned around and immediately sold Blue Acre for its $90,000 value, the $70,000 of realized but previously unrecognized gain would be recognized. And so deferral is met. Now, what happens if instead of cash, the owner of Blue Acre offers a painting worth $10,000? The result will be very similar. What you will see is that Blue Acre will still end up with a $20,000 basis and that non-cash boot, the painting here, will take as its basis its fair market value, which is $10,000 in the example. And so that's very similar to having a $10,000 pile of cash because we can think of U.S. cash as having a basis in the U.S. system equal to its face value. Here's how the mechanics work. On the recognition aspect, it's exactly the same whether the taxpayer receives cash boot or non-cash boot. It's still $10,000 of boot and $10,000 of the $80,000 of realized gain is recognized. The basis calculation is slightly different from the previous example. It's still under section 1031D, but what that subsection instructs the taxpayer to do is to take the original basis of $20,000 in Green Acre, subtract any cash boot, of which there's none here, and add any gain recognized, which there's $10,000 still of gain recognized. So that leaves a result of $30,000 of basis. But now it's basis in two assets. It's basis in Blue Acre and the painting, but they each need their own basis. So section 1031D then says, well, you take this collective basis of $30,000 and you divide it. And in so dividing it, you take the amount that's equal to the fair market value of the non-cash boot, here the $10,000 value of the painting, and you put that basis in that non-cash boot, and the remainder, which here is $20,000, that goes into your like-kind real property, which here is Blue Acre, and so you get back to a $20,000 basis in Blue Acre. It's a really neat system, actually, because at the end of the day, if you sell the painting, like with your SNAP, you won't have gain because you just paid the tax on that gain. And if you sell Blue Acre, you'll have the rest of that gain that was deferred to 70,000 and you'll recognize that then. We hope you realize that sometimes you recognize and sometimes you don't. Thanks for joining us as you break into tax.